and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode, I'll be discussing the original sequel to the 1992 gothic supernatural horror movie Candyman, the 1995 movie Candyman Farewell to the Flesh, as directed by Bill Condon. The film carries forward the legend of the Candyman visited in the first film and transplants it to a new setting. From the urban sprawl of Chicago, Illinois, to the often colonial and distinctly unique city of New Orleans, Louisiana. Here we meet Annie Tarrant, as played by Kelly Rowan, a New Orleans teacher who seeks to investigate a series of murders, or murder charges, sorry, held against her brother, Ethan, as played by William O'Leary, after the brutal slaying of Professor Philip Purcell, a renowned expert in The Candyman, as played by Michael Culkin, who we did last see, briefly, in the first movie. Candyman, as reprised once again by Tony Todd, is the supposed ghost of an artist, Daniel Robitaille, that lived in the late 19th century, the son of a slave who was brutally murdered when his relationship with the daughter of a wealthy landowner was uncovered. A tragic tale which saw his hand severed and replaced with the iconic hook by an angry mob followed by him being smeared with honeycomb from a nearby bee's nest and left for dead after the swarm descended. Legend then says the Candyman will appear to those who, as the stories go, call his names five times in a mirror, only then to have him disembowel you with his rusty hook. Slowly, as Annie unravels more about the circumstances surrounding the murders, she uncovers a grisly truth and a family secret kept hidden from her about their family's heritage and her true lineage. As she delves deeper into the myth of the Candyman, she looks to dispel the fear by calling out to him in front of a mirror in her classroom. Yes, you heard that right, in her class. I mean, that's certainly a unique teaching style, yeah? Um, and unbeknowingly brings forth the Candyman, who then looks to take Annie as a sacrifice to join him, gruesomely taking away those she loves as she, she slowly succumbs to his seduction. Now, compared to the first movie, which just exuded atmosphere and competence in its storytelling and its deep sweeping cinematography, this follow-up is certainly subpar. Failing to really capture the essence of the original whilst kind of bringing something closer to a more generic horror movie, thus kind of losing some of the unique edge that the original had. Set against the backdrop of New Orleans, uh, this time at, or, uh, well, at the time of Mardi Gras, and with a title to run uh, chills down your spine, you know, farewell to the flesh. Backed up against the lore and the allure of the Candyman legend, this movie certainly had promise. But ultimately, its direction was and delivery was ultimately flawed, cumbersome and poorly executed throughout. Which meant that unfortunately, this outing for the Candyman was lacklustre to say the least. Slow and needlessly weighed down with trying so hard to backfill a story for the Candyman that had already been established in the previous movie. This movie edges at turning the Candyman into just yet another generic horror movie monster. There are elements of his suffering that do come through um, the muddle plot and the rationale, you know, are at least there to kind of set up to resist his, this transformation, you know. But you can certainly feel and see a number of the more generic horror elements creeping in. And a number of needlessly gory elements that take away from the gravity of his story against the history and the poignant origins of the Candyman himself. Now, the story itself expands on the premise of the original. Um, but sorry, being in the, that the movie Candyman uh, was an urban legend specific to Cabrini Green, the Chicago housing estate, which acted as the centre point for the story, um, being that he was killed in the area and his ashes spread around what would then become Cabrini Green in that movie. In Farewell to the Flesh, we now learn that the Candyman legend appears in locations wherever there is suffering and desperation and hence he was able to take a vacation and uh, pop up in New Orleans. This element of the movie, I, I didn't mind. Um, I mean, the original concept was somewhat limiting, wasn't it? You know, especially in trying to generate a franchise from the property. So it did kind of make sense to expand the lore and the legend, and indeed to expand on the story with, you know, with regards to the Candyman's origins. 
It was an interesting attempt to build on the original story. It just wasn't all that well executed, as I've kind of said previously. It felt more cluttered than it needed to have been. The investigative nature of the idea felt sloppy and undercooked, such that it was difficult to care much about any of the characters or their plight. As a horror in its own right, it's pretty much middle of the road. Um, it's not all too suspenseful, even though it does try to add an air of mystery. So props for that. Um, but like the presentation itself, it's far too messy. Opting to dupe us more with an over-reliance on a number of fake and cheesy jump scares than it does with any offering of true suspense. But Tony Todd, reprising his role as the Candyman, was one of the movie's redeeming qualities, um, and indeed, its true centrepiece. He is delectable once again, uh, bringing the stature and pres uh, presence the role deserves, and indeed commands. His deep and engulfing voice, spellbinding the audience as he once again makes this role his own. He certainly doesn't disappoint, you know? He has a much larger role this time around, which was excellent to see, and well worth watching the movie for, to be honest even after everything I've said. The seduction and the allure that the Candyman has does seem to kind of seem more half-baked this time around. Um, nowhere near as believable or sustained. But this isn't Tony's, uh, well, you know, Tony Todd's fault. This was more to do with the way that the movie was set up than anything else, and Rowan's portrayal as Annie, which was mixed at best. But indeed, Candyman still commands his audience here. As the story builds, we see more of the Candyman in the flesh, so to speak, and as we delve more into Annie's family history, I must admit, it does get better. Not 100%, but it does seem to pick up some more pace towards the end, such that at least the strands that we'd kind of seen throughout the movie do come together, and indeed for much more of an explosive finale, if perhaps a less poignant one. And finally, I think another important element to point out is indeed the movie's soundtrack, which once again was composed by Philip Glass, who indeed brought us the chilling and gothically urban themes in the original movie. He returns to bring us the haunting, familiar Candyman theme, as he, you know, that he made work against the character so excellently well in the first movie, with more operatic arrangements that bring more atmosphere on their own than the movie ever attempts to do. And whilst I don't think the music works as well with the tone of this movie overall, as it kind of tries to set a mood that just isn't present, it still is a treat to listen to. Overall, this entry into the Candyman franchise edges more towards a standard horror than the original did, um, and by far was nowhere near as slickly presented nor as atmospheric. I mean, it's watchable for what it is. Tony Todd alone is a significant draw once again, as the excellently sinister but tragic Candyman. But it's a mediocre horror that lacks the energy and the conviction of the original to really be anything else. It unfortunately falls under its own curse of bringing in more generic horror elements and well-travelled tropes than really trying to be imaginative in its own right. Torn between focusing on Candyman as a monster and Candyman as a man. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Southwest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. But most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.